morning guys check it out we have a new outside horse her name is bell and henson will be riding her for 90 days so you'll probably see her in the upcoming videos um and before i start this video i wanted to um let you guys know that i got a bunch of decals um stickers i guess i don't know what you call them I got a bunch made up. They're in different colors. I think that's purple. There's red, gray, and on my cup I put a pink one. But I had these stickers made up so that um, if I see anybody in public, or if you see me, if you come up to me and say hi that and let me know that you watch our YouTube channel, I will give you a sticker. Um, we love it when people come and say hi. We've had people come up to us, I think, in like walmart and while we were pumping gas and things like that but it's always fun to see and talk to the fans so <clears throat> come say hi i'll give you a sticker um but anyway i hope you enjoy this video about the stallions we had a lot of requests um to do a video on all of our stallions i couldn't um video the stallions live because everything's turned out and um so I just put the pictures in there of the studs and um, some of their offspring and just some fun pictures. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Think you might need that or something? Maybe. <laughs> it's just laying there, might as well roll it up. Guess that's where they're getting through, huh? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> well, since you guys are just standing around, <laughs> let's talk about those. Uh... We st we are still standing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk a little bit about those um, seven stallions that you put out. This, is it seven um, that we put out last? You're asking me hard questions. Season. Yeah, there's seven. Uh, yeah, they were uh, trying to remember what Henson did. He said he did um, seven studs with 11 mares each. Yeah. So 77, maybe. I think one of them had a little more than 11. I think one. Texas had like 13. Okay, so let's talk about Texas then. Uh, son of Leo Hancock Hayes. And um, I think he's 50, 52 and three quarters or 53% blue valentine. So he's one of the Blue Valentine studs out there that's a real, real high percentage. I haven't color tested him. I don't know if he's homozygous or for roan or black, but he's never, I've never seen anything other than a, a roan. It's been by him. Not, not all blue roans. Blue roans and bay roans is, is what I experienced by that guy. And that's probably 30 foals. I think we've had by him, probably. So, probably homozygous roan. Could be black too. I don't know that for sure. Have you ridden any of those, Henson? We started one. Yeah, we rode one this summer. One this summer, if you didn't hear that. Salty was out this year. We were thinking that this might be his last foal crop. He didn't do real well after we took him out. He was uh, just really sore acting and looked like he just was acting his age. But uh, after just a little bit, he's sprung right back and he looks really good and he's moving around good. So 
I'm sure we'll put him back out in the spring, but he's uh, a grandson of Mr. Roan Hancock and then a Midland dot on the bottom side. So we've had a lot of foals that are by him that are pretty nice. They ride good. They're smart. They, they're quick, uh, but they're gentle. They're not always the biggest. He's 15-1, but most of those foals that we've seen grow up are probably 15 to 15-2, depending on the mare. But real nice to handle. Henson's ridden quite a few of them. He really likes them. Yeah, he, he always says he really likes those salty foals. He's riding one right now to, uh, by Salty that's um, blue sand, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's that blue roan. You want to cut this piece off? Use it. Oh, yeah. A little longer. Uh, they got some go. They seem like they're pretty quick. Um, I guess you can kind of beat one up. <laughs> they don't care too much. You can ride the crap out of it. Pretty forgiving. Yeah, they're real forgiving. They're, uh, they're tough. Yeah, they don't mind if, if, if something is mean. Like if a cow is kind of mean and naughty, they ain't going to get scared of it. It'll stay on them. It, that's kind of what we mean by getting them beat up. You get a mean cow or a bull kind of pushing them around or hitting them. Yeah. Some of them get pretty shy, but Salty seem to stay pretty, pretty hooked up. <coughs> there, looks good. Okay, well that's good for now, huh? Well, we'll go check that other side. We're gonna check the other one up there. So another one that went out was Dash. Yeah. What's his registered name? Oh goodness. All these hard <laughs> questions. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, Go Dash Leo Leo Hayes, I believe, is his full name. We just call him Dash. He's another son of Leo Hancock Hayes. He's a horse that we haven't had too long. We bought him last year at the very end of the breeding season, and I did breed him to one mare that I thought would possibly be open, and and she was. And so we do have one foal this year that's by him. And it's a red roan. Uh, pretty nice foal. We don't uh, know much about how they ride. Uh, the previous owners... We rode that one two-year-old. Yeah, we had, we had a two-year-old we actually bought when we picked him up. And one of the purposes we bought her was just so that we could ride her and kind of see, you know, how we liked them. Uh, she started really easy and, and rode pretty good. And then we just turned her out and we're just using her. She's actually bred this year. We bred her just, uh, I hate to have anything that's not making a living. So we did breed that mare, but she was pretty nice. She was really cow bred on the bottom side, um, Doc Alina. But he's got some running blood on him too on the, his bottom side. And this last foal that we are the only foal we had for the 2021. This is a shapey, nice head. Um, seems to be real gentle. We took him and started messing with him and haltered him and he was real gentle to be handled. So I oh, think- we trimmed him that same day. Oh yeah, we trimmed him the same day. Henson yeah. trimmed him and, and he uh, just stood there real nice. Thing. So I think we're gonna really like everything that's by him. We just don't have many at this point, but we're gonna have some, so we'll see. We like him. He's, uh, again, I haven't really measured him, but he's probably around the 15-2 mark. He has some size to him, a lot of bone, nice foot on him. He's, uh, real gentle to be around. They said he was a little aggressive to other horses. Um, we've put him with all the other studs and gildings and he just seems really laid back. So we like that. And that's probably about all I really know about him at this point. We're gonna know more later. This fence uh, water gap looked like it was uh, pretty scary at some point. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
So I know Monster was out too. Yeah, Monster, we always put him out. He was uh, in the river. Poco Drifting Wind. Poco Drifting Wind. I, I know yeah. his name. <laughs> and he is uh, he's, 11 this he, year. Is he 11? Yeah. yeah. Daniel knows ages better than I do. <laughs> anyway, so his uh, bowls, of course, we've ridden quite a few. And they're just real gentle, easy going, big. They have a lot of foot, a lot of bone, uh, even some size to them, depending on the mare. But most of them will have some size. They're uh, just, like I said, a laid back. But they're pretty cowy. Um, his, he's got some uh, poco bueno back in there. And it kind of comes through that and Leo. So they're pretty cowy, those even though they have some size, he's pretty cowy and he can really move when you kind of kind of make him move. For a big horse, he's, he's pretty nice. Henson, pretty, Henson started lots of those. Lots of those and they're, they've all been good. They're, they're all smart. They're just kind of a, a breeze, it seems like. I don't think any of them uh, bronk around or get too frisky. They just kind of do what you want. So, for those people who are really looking for something that's laid back with some size, but can still get out there and, and work a cow with rope, or, and, they, and they can run too. He's a pretty good sire for that. Um, so, I think you already have some money from people for next yeah, year's. Yeah, I have huh? some deposits on him already for next year. I think there's two mares still available for him and well be uh, i think there's three if we count your your uh, bay roan mare that'd be three mares so if you're looking for something like that monster's kind of the the one we know quite a bit about for being gentle and it still has a lot of go they're tough and they can work <coughs> Who else did we have out? Uh, True Blue. True Blue Valentine. He's one that we just acquired last year. He's also a, a son of Leo Hancock Hayes. He's a Blue Roan. I don't know too much about his foals. I've seen a couple of them. Um, I believe he was bred to a, a buckskin a couple of times and he actually threw a buckskin. But I've seen a Red Roan that was by him also. I don't, I think the, it was a sorrow mare. So I don't know a whole lot except for the guy who I bought him from had used him. They did some roping on him. They had some stuff that was by him that they roped on and they seemed to really like him. He was one that I really debated whether to buy because they were, he was just stable his whole life. He was just in a barn and a stall. He had never been turned out with mares. He'd been hand bred or bred into in a small pen and he'd never been turned out with anything else and so i was a little worried about him being able to survive or whether he'd get out and and uh, service mares out in the open country but we turned him out he he fell off quite a bit um, but he all the mares that were with him seemed to be bred we didn't preg check any of them but just by looking at it physically they all look like they're bred, so. And by fell off, you mean he lost some weight? He, he lost some weight, yeah, from what he was. I mean, he had been standing in a stall his whole life just eating. So that was kind of expected. Yeah, because he didn't know how to eat out here in this country. And, and I would go out and feed him a little bit too. And we've done that with quite a few that we bought that were like that, just so that we can acclimate them over, their, over a couple of years, really, is what it takes. So I suspect, and he's older, I don't remember his age exactly, but I think he's 17. And so next year he'll do better. And then after that, he'll probably be um, pretty acclimated. Salty was the same way when we got Salty, he was just pinned up. And his first year was pretty tough on him. And second year was a little better. And now, you know, you can turn him out and he stays in good shape. Um, 
he knows how to travel, he knows how to eat what native feed are here, so he's done real well. So I know they acclimate, you just have to give them a little time and just help them out a little bit. But he's real gentle, and he reminds me a lot of the, uh, the dash horse. Matter of fact, when they're side by side, it's kind of hard to tell them apart, except for True Blue has some white on him. But they're about the same size, same thing, got some foot on them, some bone. Um, just even their conformation kind of looks a lot alike. But they're both good dispositions, Dash and True Blue. And then there's Trigger. Yeah, Trigger, I think most everyone's seen Trigger. He's he's the son of Sun Frost. And um, I think he's like 17 too. Yeah, he's, he's not young. Maybe 19, 18. Same thing, he was in Arizona, uh, Southern Arizona when I found him. I think Henson actually is the one who noticed him up for sale and showed me the information and said, what do you think? And I thought, wow, a son of Sunfrost and one that's being ridden. Uh, he had had some roping done on him and he had run barrels and he was just kind of an all around. I think he was actually a three event horse, but he wasn't young. And a lot of people are afraid of those horses that aren't young. So we just took a chance and said, let's go get him. And so we, we went and down to Southern Arizona and picked him up and we liked everything about him. There, were, there weren't a lot of foals out there that were uh, by him either. So we didn't know a lot, but everybody we talked to that had one said they really liked the foals. So I think we're kind of the same way now. We haven't ridden any of those, but I've had him, I think three years now. So there's some out there. Maybe we'll get a chance to ride some here pretty quick. He's always easy to handle. He's good. Mannered. He, good mannered. He uh, he rides nice too. I mean, he doesn't have the the fancy handle to him, but I mean, he'll do whatever you need. He can grandkids move, can turn ride around. him. Grandkids can ride him. Yeah, Connor rides him quite a bit. He seems to like him. Gets along with him. So uh, we have Nidal. He'd be the last one. Yeah, he's the uh, he's also a son of Leo Hancock Hayes. He is a solid bay, uh, running blood on his bottom side also. The guy that I got him from was in uh, Montana, I believe. And he bred a mare that his wife ran barrels on for years and was a real nice mare. And so he too was hunting up Leo. And so he found Leo Hancock Hayes and he bred that mare. And, and that was the result. He and his kids raised that horse and you can tell that he'd had a lot of kids around him. He's super gentle around people and around children and he just wants to be your friend and hang out. <laughs> and um, and he was ridden quite a bit too. Uh, we, we really didn't ride him, he was older. I, I think he's 18 or 19. He's big knee. And he had a big knee when I got him and so I didn't, I didn't feel a need to sit and beat him up. I didn't. I knew he rode, I didn't have to wonder about that. So we just used him and bred some mares and Henson um, was able to ride some of those. I guess he rode a filly not too long ago that her name was Fancy. A real nice filly, uh, started really easy, had a lot of go. And that's what we've noticed about night owls is they, they're not lazy, um, they have quick feet but they're gentle, you know, they don't try to bite and kick you and all that good stuff that, that people are afraid of. And I'm afraid of it too, I guess, it kind of hurts you. So we really liked everything so far about him and they're, they're pretty solid. Same guy, they have a lot of bone, they have a lot of foot to them. They're really pretty headed. They have uh, some really good conformation. And I think he has um, some some roans out of out of some roan mares, but he'll do a lot of sorrel, a lot of bay. So he's 
not homozygous by any means, but they're always nice. You can guarantee you'll get a pretty one. And if you don't care about color, it's a bonus for you because they're usually they sell a little bit cheaper just because they're a sorrel or a bay. And that's crazy, but it is what it is. Not any less horse, just minus some of that fancy color. So that was all seven that we um, threw out this year. There's yeah. a few more that we didn't throw out, I think th uh, three or four. Well, there's uh, Czar, Mr. Arizona, Lynx, and um, Rojo's Classy Roan, RKR. And we just bred Czar to outside mares this year. So he was, I was riding him, doing barrels and, and whatnot. So we did outside mares with him. Um, RKR. How come we didn't put him out? Well, we put uh, so many mares with some of the older Leo Hancock Hayes studs that we wanted to, um, you know, hopefully have some fillies and keep. And same with Salty. We figured we didn't know how many more years Salty would, would be able to service mares. And so we hadn't really kept a lot of fillies. And so we thought, well, let's just Let's just load those guys up and maybe keep some replacements. And so that's why we did that. It wasn't because we don't like RKR or, or Lynx or Czar or any of those, even Mr. Arizona. It was just a management, I guess, decision on our part of uh, looking down the future for replacements of some of the older sires that are good sires that we, we could possibly lose any day we just never know when they get that age of course it doesn't matter what age you can lose them at any time but yeah with age there's you know you at least think about that possibility and that's why we we did that with the elders the older horses and mr arizona is not old no right he's here. just um he's a young horse um i did breed him and we did have two foals that were by him really nice foals I should have kept them, but I didn't. I'd already made some commitments to some people and and then some other things happened. I ended up um, letting one of them go also because of that. So there's some nice fillies out there that are by him. I don't own them, <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. Whoop! Oh, fall up on your scariness. <clears throat> are you scary enough? Yeah, it looks pretty. Yeah, it looks good. Stout now. <clears throat> And Lynx. Lynx is, um, so he's not young, but he's not old. Uh, kind of the same thing. We just figured we'd put some of the mares we might normally put with him. We actually put with um, um, Texas this year. There were some sorrels, uh, really more of the cow bread kind of stuff we put with him. More than likely, they will be bay roans uh, maybe some red roans i don't know but they'll have some cow breeding on the bottom side and, and then of course the leo hancock hayes on the top side so they ought to be really nice foals we have high hopes for them but lynx is the same way you know he's he's a nice horse well if you're looking for something really quick footed even you know straight fast there he, he will produce that they're not always the most gentle to handle uh, to start with. Not that they're mean, but they're quick, just like those cow horses are. They very like to sensitive. get their job done and be done. Yeah, they're very sensitive. They're, they're not Bronx, but they'll sure scoot out from under you if you're not careful when they're twos and threes and, and older. But So those who like that kind and real shapey, not real big, 14 to... I think there's some 15 hand horses that he's produced out there. But one of my favorites anyway. Did you guys use all your wire? Yeah. We, we, we have measured it. <laughs> that um, was a lucky we, guess. Yeah, we, we stepped it out knowing what we we're gonna have to fix. And we stepped it out 
and that's how much wire we took. <laughs> if you believe that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you guys put that there because it's scary? You might chase those cows back in the wrong si right side. Yeah, keeps them on that side. Keeps them on that side because they don't want to cross it because this, this head is on this side. So they know if they get on this side, they could be Hanging just in. like that. <laughs> and that's because the railroad's there. <laughs> yeah, that's the railroad right, right up there.